Uh, so today, we're talking about rotational motion and incorporating the law of gravity into it. We mentioned gravity once upon a time earlier. We'll revisit it again here in the context of rotational motion. Uh, so back in the day, we talked about displacement, velocity, and acceleration. What was the symbol for displacement? Yeah, we use delta x, or if it's in the y direction, delta y, or something like that. Uh, what about velocity? So, and acceleration? Cool, what was velocity? What was the definition? Yeah, displacement over time. And then what was acceleration? Yeah, change in velocity over the change in time. In a rotational sense, we're not now talking about linear displacement, how far we are from start to finish. So now we're talking about going around in a circle and how far we've gone as we rotate around the circle and how far we've gone in terms of angle. So in this case, you know, if I go this far, what angle have I distended from the x-axis? 90, and if I keep going, 180, 270, 270. 360, but those are in lovely degrees, and the SI unit for angles is not degrees. We're going to be using radians. So one full circle, 360 degrees, is the same as? 2 pi. Radians. So in this case, that means 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So as we go around this far again, that's not 90 degrees, that's pi over 2 radians. And as to 180, that would be pi. To 270, that would be 3 pi over 2, and to 360, that's 2 pi. And so every complete rotation is 2 pi radians. So this is typically what we give you as a conversion. If you want to go 360 is 2 pi, same diff, whatever. That's your conversion. So like when I had 270 degrees here, so in this case, I'm like, what is that in radians? So I would just take pi radians is the equivalent of 180 degrees and get my 3 halves pi radians out of that. Cool? Sweet, so we'll plug in some things in radians. So when do you need to be really, 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 really careful? In, calculator. in your calculator. So just be super careful, because are we gonna do everything in radians? No, we have certain vectors with angles of degrees and stuff. Gonna do things in radians, make sure your calculator's in the radians mode. If you're doing things in degrees, make sure you change your mode right back real quick. Double check your answers when it matters. All right, so in this case, when we're talking about rotational, so displacement, or we call it angular displacement, the angle you've displaced, so, and we refer to that as being delta theta, sometimes shortened down to just theta, so, but delta theta is proper. So, and then velocity is angular velocity now. <clears throat> and in this case, instead of being linear displacement over time, it's equal to angular displacement over time. So, and angular acceleration is alpha. By the way, this is omega for angular velocity, not w. So, an angular acceleration is alpha, and just like linear acceleration is change in velocity over time, this is now change in angular velocity over the change in time. So, everything is exactly analogous to what we did with linear. In fact, every single one of your equations in a linear sense that we dealt with is gonna hold true, we're gonna have an analogous angular equivalent or rot rotational equivalent. Let's take a look at those real quick. So you remember some of the equations we had if there was no acceleration, so equation equals zero. What was really the only equation we had dealing with plain old regular linear displacement back in the day? Yeah, delta x equals vt, and if you notice, that really just comes from the definition of velocity, and our t here is really technically a delta t, but same diff. And so when you have no acceleration, that's all you got. Whereas if you have constant or uniform acceleration, we had a few different equations. What was my favorite one? Yeah, v average t. So that was my favorite. But typically, I had you guys try these systematically. What was the next one? The initial t plus 1 half at squared. My least favorite one, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. And finally, I don't really even like this as an equation, but v final equals v initial plus 
AT, which is really just a rearrangement of the definition of acceleration. Now for each one of these, you have exactly the same angular equations with the corresponding angular variables. So in this case, instead of delta x equaling vt when there's no acceleration, in this case, we're going to have delta theta equals omega t. So a lovely table on your handout there that shows the corresponding ones right next to each other. In this case, I'm just going to write them right below so we can see how everything lines up. So same thing with constant acceleration. We'll have delta theta equals omega average times t. We'll have delta theta equals omega initial times t plus one half alpha t squared. We'll have omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus two alpha delta theta. And finally, omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t. So all the same kinematics equations we've already dealt with have a corresponding angular equivalent. It's often convenient if you think about the linear ones, which you're much more familiar with, and then look at the corresponding angular ones. Look at what you're given in a problem, kind of work your way through the same way. So, but if you kind of relate it back to your linear stuff, it'll make your life a lot easier until you kind of have this down. So let's look at some examples here. Oh, let's do one more thing real quick. So we had just a second ago, delta x versus delta theta. We had v versus omega, and we had a versus alpha. And you should know the relationship between all these is delta x here is equal to r delta theta. If you take delta theta and multiply by the radius of the rotational motion, you get the arc length here in this case, so the distance traveled around that arc. So same thing if you take r omega, multiply the angular velocity times the radius, you get the linear equivalent, if you will. Time. So the same diff, and same thing here, a equals r alpha. All related by multiplying by r. So if you notice here, let's say we look at omega here. What are the units for omega? Yeah, radians per second. So and if you multiply that by the radius of meters, it turns into meters per second. The radians is kind of this funky made up unit, so to speak, or sort of anyways. So but you get your meters per second. So the only reason I give you this is that, you know, some, sometimes it's easy to forget, which side did R go on? I can't remember. So make your units work out. The radians kind of disappear. Cool. Okay, now let's deal with a couple of problems. Number one says, a record with a diameter of 18 centimeters spins at a constant rate of 45 revolutions per minute, aka RPMs. What is the angular velocity of the record in radians per second? So in this case, 45 revolutions per minute, and we want to turn this into radians per second. So in this case, Deal with the minutes first, that's easier. 60 seconds in a minute. So, and then revolutions versus radians, and what's the equivalent there? Yeah, one revolution, one complete circle is two pi radians. And now we'll get radians per second. Anybody get me an answer here on this? Cool, did you multiply, you multiply the pi through? Yeah. 4.71 radians. Cool, I left it with pi there because I'm not gonna do that in my head, but 4.71 radians per second. That's your omega, your angular velocity. Cool, the second half of number one says, what is the tangential velocity of a point on the edge of the record? So in this case, we got this record. So, and it's spinning at any point in the circular motion the velocity is perpendicular to the circle, if you will, right? So if we're rotating around this way, then at this point here, the velocity actually would point in that direction. So at this point, it would point straight down, here to the right, here straight up. So let's say you had a Cheerio on top of this record as it's spinning around. So and all of a sudden, that Cheerio catches a little air. Right at that point, it would continue moving straight that direction. So after leaving the record. So that's what we mean by tangential velocity in this case. So as we're going through this rotational motion, the speed in this case is constant. 
but the velocity is not constant because oh, we'll get there soon, but sort of maybe not. So, so why is the, why can the speed remain constant, but the velocity is not remaining constant? What's the difference between speed and velocity? Velocity has direction. Velocity is a vector. Speed is a scalar. So in this case, velocity has direction, and even though the magnitude is not changing the entire time, it's constant. The direction's changing the entire time. So we'll learn later, as you pointed out, though, that the acceleration we're undergoing here is called centripetal acceleration. We'll deal with that a little bit later here. Cool. But in this case, the tangential velocity. We want the magnitude of that tangential velocity going around. And so in this case, how do I turn an angular velocity omega? into a tangential velocity v? Yeah, just r. Excellent. Does it have to be in meters? I would recommend it. So in this case, uh, what's your radius in meters? Um, oh, you're probably... Ooh, what is it? Careful. So notice it's, it has 18 centimeters the radius. Good. So 18 centimeters the diameter, so 9 centimeters the radius, it's 0.09 meters, times your 4.71 radians per second. And what do we get for a tangential velocity? Excellent. Cool, continuing on, number two says, a wheel rotates from rest with an angular acceleration, alpha, of 4.0 radians per second per second, i.e. radians per second squared. Uh, what is the angular of the displacement of the wheel after 30 seconds? So what are we actually ask, being asked to solve for? What variable? Uh, delta, delta, delta. delta theta, angular displacement. Cool, so in this case, we gotta ask ourselves a question. Do we have an acceleration, yes or no? Angular acceleration, yes or no? Yes, okay, we're dealing with this. Let's try my favorite. So to know the average angular velocity, do I know the initial angular velocity? Starts from where? Starts from rest, so yes I do. Do I know the final angular velocity? I don't, but I could probably know it pretty quickly. So if you notice, what's the angular acceleration? 4.0 what? Radians per second squared. Radians what? Per second, second squared. Radians per second per second. So in this case, every second, our velocity is, our angular velocity is speeding up four radians per second. So after 30 seconds, how fast would it be if every second it goes up by four radians per second? 4.0 times 30 seconds. Yeah, 4.0 times 30 seconds. Essentially, we're using this equation right here. We're saying zero plus four times 30, we're getting 120 radians per second is our final velocity. So if the initial is zero and the final is 120, what's the average angular velocity? 60. And our journey is 30 seconds and we'll apply those together and yeah, we'll get it. Sweet. So I could use this, but I had to do a couple calculations. So instead of using that, I'm just going to jump in straight to our next one. That's the one that's going to take us home pretty quickly here. So, but we could have got it here as well. Uh, in this case, delta theta equals omega initial t plus one half alpha t squared. So I know the initial velocity is zero. So I know alpha, I know t, and on one equation, one calculation, I'll get this. Nine hundred times a half, or actually, four fifty times four. Yeah, eighteen hundred radians. The same thing we were gonna get before when we did sixty times thirty seconds. Questions. Relate this as much as you can again to the linear variables. Make your life a lot easier until this kind of become second hand. <laughs> 